I'm Ella Good. I'm Nikki Kent. And we're artists, we work together. And all of our work is working with people and looking at um, what, what can happen if we bring people together. So we're working on a project where we're designing and building our version of a Martian house. Well, we've been working on this project for so long. It's, it's going like... to be very exciting to finally see it coming to life. It's turning into like the, like the biggest, most exciting version of what we've hoped for. Yes, when we began we thought it might just be the two of us making something and maybe we'd persuade a couple of people to come around our house and build something in the back garden. My name is Hugh Broughton and I'm an architect and I specialise in the design of buildings in remote locations, primarily in Antarctica. So much of the work that's being done on the Mars House has parallels with the work that we're also doing in other extreme environments. It just allows one to just really let your imagination go mad, but within boundaries. I think that's what's really exciting about this project, was trying to make it very practical, trying to really root it to the issue of living on Mars. So, about four years ago, we did a bit of research that was looking at what people around the world were doing to prepare to send humans to Mars. Yeah, so we went yeah, to the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah and um, we got to experience the, the simulation of living on Mars. We've both just been interested in space and space travel for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing that we heard about that we thought was really exciting was that in Russia, um, when the country was getting ready for the space race and they were making rockets, ordinary people got so excited about the thought of their country going to space that they melted down, they gave their spoons to be melted down to become part of the rockets. We wanted to make a project that kind of harnessed that excitement Mm -hmm. um, that sense of like people getting behind something that sounds impossible when, when you first say it, um, that we're going to build our own Martian house and that we're not scientists. We did um, workshops that were about well-being within design, thinking about how can we make a design that is about living well on Mars rather than just surviving. So it might seem quite you know, science fiction to think about living on Mars, but actually the practicality of how you will live has a really real relevance to all of us. Yeah, here and now and today. It's essentially like providing people with this scenario of going to another planet to live. And so it's a look at um, what, what would really happen if you started all over again. Like, you yeah. have to think about everything you're taking with you. It's like a blank canvas. Yes. Um, and you also have to think about how can you live with really limited resources. You can't just order something to arrive to you. You're, you're only going to have a certain amount of water. Um, you're only going to have a certain amount of power. So how can um, having really the minimal help us uh, redesign how we live here and now? What does it mean? to move to Mars, like what, what would that mean for people, for humanity? Should we be taking our, our history and our culture kind of with us or would we be starting an entirely new culture? Yeah, space travel represents kind of a hopeful endeavour. It's, um, you know, it's like forward looking, it's, mm. it's looking to the future. So my background is in mechanical engineering and then I did a PhD in space physics and I've specialised in designing satellites and probes for uh, interplanetary missions and that includes Mars. I really like working with uh, Ella and Nikki as artists uh, and being a scientist or an engineer because I feel like we bring different aspects, different philosophies, different approaches. Whilst we have different angles, we have the same common problem-solving mentality, uh, which is essential to, to getting this project off the ground. 
uh, or not off the ground, but onto Mars. <laughs> Why do we need people to take part in this project if we've got these brilliant scientists and engineers and architects who can build a Martian house? We've worked with loads and loads of different people. We've worked with school children and rocket scientists, like complete different ends of the scale. And, and we've been asking the same questions to all of these different people. We wanted to make our, have our go at making this a contribution to this field of research. And we felt there was no be better way than making the people's version by trying to involve as many people as possible in this process. How can we build in optimism a version of the future? So we've got our first designs, our first kind of conceptual designs, and now we're working on how we turn those into ones that are ready to build. And our next step is to build it. It'll be in a location outside that everybody can see it happening, and it's going to happen over a couple of months. It'll be a real spectacle. But there's also loads of different ways to take part that we haven't even thought of yet because we want people can just contact us and tell us what they're interested in really. Like if you can see a place for yourself in the project, then you can just come and tell us. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or an architect to, to get involved. Um, there's, there's, there's a place for everybody in the project. And building the house is just the beginning. There'll yeah. be this big programme within it that will be talks and workshops and maybe performances or virtual reality experiences and um, there's lots more to be excited about. Like once it's built that's that's not it it's not it's not a finished kind of answer to how do you build a Martian house um, it just goes on from there.